President Trump says politics are at play in the way China is approaching this, tweeting, quote, I think that China felt they were being beaten so badly in the recent negotiation that they may as well wait around for the next election, 2020, to see if they could get lucky and have a Democrat win. Let's bring in Fox News senior political analyst Britt Hume. Britt, good morning to you. So the president's making the case that China's making a bad bet here that he won't win the next presidency. Well, that seems to be one theory of the case. Uh, my sense is that China wants a deal and doesn't want to have to wait, what, a year and a half or more um, for a new administration, and then the additional time it will take that administration to settle in and, and perhaps revise or perhaps not revise the current posture toward China. So I'm not sure that's the most compelling theory of what's going on here. The president added, Britt, that the only problem is that they know I am going to win. He touts the best economy and the employment numbers uh, that we've seen in U.S. history and much more. Uh, but he is staying strong on this issue politically. Is this working for the president? Well, look, he's out on a limb on a couple of issues. One of them is this with China. The other, of course, is his effort to get North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons. Those were bold initiatives on his part, controversial, um, risky. And if they, you know, if, if either or both pan out, uh, that will very much strengthen his hand going into 2020. If neither does, that obviously will have the opposite effect and make it much more likely, I think, that a Democrat will come in. The president carries the burden of being personally unpopular with a majority of the American people, uh, many of whom may approve of his uh, results, particularly on the economy so far, but do not approve of him personally. Uh, that's a burden he's carried since he got elected, indeed, before he got elected. So he carries that additional burden and therefore more, you know, badly needs success on these two big uh, initiatives of his. Surely patience will be tested on both sides when you had a over 500 points sell off in the Dow last week. And here we are this morning, Monday morning alone. Uh, the this, Dow is, down. this is all trade jitters, uh, yeah. Sandra. I don't think there's any doubt about that. If the, you know, the trade picture begins to brighten, as it did, what, on Friday when he said something about constructive right. talks and the market Turned rose right on around. that. So that, this is not about fundamentals in the economy. This is about worry about a, a, a full-on, all-out trade war with China. And That's all this All is. that uncertainty hitting markets today. Uh, Britt, I've got to ask you about this political piece, uh, talking about the dream ticket for Democrats. Uh, black lawmakers pitch Biden-Harris to beat Trump. Senior members of the Congressional Black Caucus say it's ideal ticket if the former vice president stays atop the polls, and that would be along with Kamala Harris. What do you think? If, 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 if we're nine months from anybody voting, we haven't even had our first debate yet, we got more than 20 candidates in the race. This is a very fluid situation. Um, you know, early polls tell you something. In the, in the case of Biden with his early lead, it tells you that he's got, you know, residual strength within the, within the Democratic Party for his career and particularly for his tour of duty as, uh, as Barack Obama's running mate. But beyond that, we have no idea how this is going to play out. We don't know. Biden has, you know, he's, he's run before and he's flamed out in both instances when he was running for president. So we got an awfully long way to go here. It is ridiculously too early to start talking about dream tickets. I mean, we don't know how Kamala Harris is going to hold up in the debate. She may be great. She may do poorly. That's true of Biden as well. So, I mean, this is, I mean, you got to write something, I guess, if you're covering politics. Yeah. Um, the, and the Biden's ascendancy in the polls has given the race some shape that it lacked before. But we got an awfully long way to go. And the here. piece acknowledges that no one in the caucus is declaring Biden the winner of the presidential race. Obviously, two dozen candidates still in there. Uh, but it did this does go on to talk about Biden's popularity with African-American voters. Obviously, that's something to acknowledge as, as, as some do start to dream up the dream ticket. Right? Final well, very thoughts. important constituency within the Democratic Party, of course. And, and uh, you know, the fact that the idea that you would, you know, that he could be acceptable to blacks, especially if he had an African-American, indeed an African-American woman on the ticket with him. But it is, as I say... Uh, it's fun to talk about, I guess, but uh, awfully early. Awfully early. Britt Hume, thank you. Nice to see you on a Monday morning. Thank you, thank Sandra. You.